Northrop Grumman's F-5 tactical fighter has become one of the most enduring military aircraft designs ever developed. Going back to its first flight in the 1960s, the Freedom Fighter has been going strong for over five decades thanks to the company's initial objective of developing a cost-effective aircraft that was easy to operate and inexpensive to maintain. The F-5 has also earned a reputation for being a highly maneuverable and reliable supersonic fighter, capable of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground rolls. During the Vietnam War, a squadron of F-5s known as the Little Tigers proved their worth as a close air support platform that decimated the enemy whenever they were called to action. The combat test was so successful that the F-5 instantly gained significant international attention and sold to more than 20 countries. In 1975, even the Soviet Union got a chance to test the F-5 against their MiG-21 with surprising results. Lightweight Strike Fighter In the early 1950s, NATO issued a requirement to develop a small, lightweight, jet-powered fighter aircraft. The requirement was formalized with the NBMR-1 document, which specified the LWSF, or Lightweight Strike Fighter, had to be capable of carrying conventional and tactical nuclear weapons. Several NATO partners made their submissions, including the United States. In 1954, Northrop Corporation toured Europe and Asia to further understand the engineering parameters for the breed of fighter aircraft. That year, the U.S. Navy expressed interest in an aircraft of similar capabilities that could operate from the decks of escort carriers. Existing U.S. Navy aircraft were too large, requiring a lighter and smaller fighter. Northrop answered the call with the N-156 design, a lightweight, twin-engine jet fighter based on ideas gathered from NATO's LWSF program. The design employed the General Electric J85 turbojet engine and evolved into different platforms, a single-seat fighter variant and a two-seat combat trainer. The Navy chose this twin-seat design to replace the T-33 Shooting Star jet trainer. At the same time, the N-156F single-seat variant caught the eye of the U.S. Air Force to field an aircraft that was low-cost and easy to use and repair. The first prototype flew in July 1959 at Edwards Air Force Base without issues. Besides breaking the sound barrier, the prototype excelled at air-to-air -air and air-to-ground engagements, making it a versatile multi-role fighter. President John F. Kennedy pushed the project forward, and in 1962, Northrop's N-156F was declared the winner of the FX competition, whose objective was to field a budget export fighter for U.S. allies. Freedom Fighter The N-156F was labeled F-5 by the U.S. Air Force and entered service in 1963. The aircraft was nicknamed Freedom Fighter as part of the export objective behind it. The F-5A was the standard variant of the aircraft. It was mainly designed for air-to-ground attacks because it lacked a fire control radar system to track, identify, and engage air targets with guided missiles. As intended, the Freedom Fighter was powered by the GE J85 turbojet engine that provided over 2,720 pounds of thrust, allowing the aircraft to reach speeds of Mach 1.4, a service ceiling of over 50,000 feet, and a combat range of 1,385 miles with internal fuel. The F-5's armament comprised two M39 cannons placed on the nose and up to 6,200 pounds of ordnance. Two AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles were fitted below the wingtips, while four under-wing and one under-fuselage hardpoint could carry bombs, missiles, and external fuel stores. Over 630 F-5A aircraft were produced, alongside 200 F-5B aircraft, a two-seat combat trainer for pilots. The Freedom Fighter was a commercial success and was sold to numerous American allies. In 1964, American military presence in Vietnam escalated after the Gulf of Tonkin incident and led to complete military intervention a year later. With a new war on the horizon, the U.S. Air Force sent a squadron of F-5A Freedom Fighters to evaluate their performance in actual combat scenarios. The Scotia Tigers Preliminary combat evaluations of the Freedom Fighter began in early 1965 at the Air Proving Ground Center of Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. 
Project Sparrowhawk was the codename for the series of tests that evaluated the combat capabilities of the aircraft. The F-5 crews and ground support personnel went through rigorous training to handle and properly maintain the aircraft in the tropical landscapes of South Vietnam. Even so, one of the F-5s was lost during testing due to a pilot error. Following the operational tests, the F-5As and F-5Bs received several improvements, including an air-to-air -air refueling probe, advanced cockpit instruments, and more importantly, additional armor for the engine compartment and the cockpit. All these modifications would prove essential for the Freedom Fighter's survival in its upcoming close air support role in Vietnam, and the changes resulted in the F-5C designation mark. Once the crews were ready, the squadron of Freedom Fighters was sent to Indochina in October 1965 for live combat operations evaluation. The Vietnam War combat tour was dubbed Project Scotia Tiger, or Little Tiger in Japanese. Twelve airframes were integrated into the 3rd Tactical Fighter Squadron, and operated from Da Nang Air Base to fly over Laos, Cambodia, and Bien Hoa to support Allied ground forces in South Vietnam. More Freedom Tigers would join the fray weeks later. Flying over Vietnam For over six months, the Little Tigers flew more than 2,600 sorties, conducting CAS, or close air support missions, to decimate enemy forces and keep American and South Vietnamese units from being overwhelmed by the Viet Cong guerrilla. The Little Tigers also dropped bombs, launched rockets, and destroyed acres of the jungle with napalm strikes to eliminate North Vietnamese army and Viet Cong bridges, roads, barracks, and compounds critical to the communist war effort. Over 1.5 million 20mm rounds were fired from the Little Tiger's cannons during combat operations. Overall, the sorties with the 3rd Tactical Fighter Squadron were deemed a success, proving the air-to-air -air and air-to-ground capabilities of the F-5. The Little Tiger's small size and ability to fly fast and low made it a difficult target for North Vietnamese anti-aircraft batteries, which were more accustomed to shooting down larger and slower fixed-wing aircraft. The service of the Scotia Tigers was extended until 1967, and during this time, nine were lost as part of the combat testing phase, seven of them due to Vietnamese ground fire. Following the U.S. Air Force combat evaluation, the surviving F-5Cs were delivered to the South Vietnam Air Force, where they would serve until the fall of Saigon in 1975. Soviet F-5s When the Republic of Vietnam fell in 1975, some American F-5Cs that were not destroyed were recommissioned with North Vietnam's Communist Air Force. Some would even see action against the Cambodian Communists and the invading Chinese forces that engaged in Vietnam after the American withdrawal. Other F-5s were shipped to the Soviet Union for inspection as a token of appreciation for the USSR's support of North Vietnam. These captured Tigers were painted with the colors of the Soviet Air Force and marked with the Red Star of the Soviet Union. Soviet officers eventually tested the captured F-5s against the MiG-21, which was deemed a superior aircraft. Engines, systems, armament, and cockpit instruments were analyzed. Despite its superior thrust-to-weight ratio, the Soviet pilots soon discovered the MiG-21 lost against the F-5Cs in most tests. In his book, Lifelong Runway, Former Soviet Air Force test pilot Vladimir Kondalrov explained that both aircraft were considered equals at high speeds and energy fighting. Nevertheless, as speeds got slower, the F-5 proved a superior fighter, with superior aerodynamics that made up for its lesser power-to-weight ratio. Over 35 test flights were conducted, and the American fighter demonstrated it could handle itself well against the Soviet fighter. The data gathered from the captured F-5s was later used to improve the performance of future aircraft such as the Su-25 and Su-27. The Tiger's Legacy The F-5C Scotia Tiger nickname, employed during the Vietnam War, stuck with the Air Force and Northrop personnel, and was used to designate a more powerful aircraft variant, the F-5E Tiger II. This improved variant was developed to outperform the Soviet MiG-21, it flew for the first time in 1972 and was introduced in 1975. The Tiger II was the first direct improvement after the Freedom Fighter's 1959 design. It also followed Northrop's ideology 
of developing a cost-effective fighter that was easy to maintain. Its main upgrade comprised a pair of more powerful engines, the JE J85 21 21A series, which provided more horsepower, range, and service ceiling. Moreover, the width and length of the fuselage had to be extended to accommodate the engines, additional fuel, and more ordnance, while the wings were fitted with enlarged leading-edge extensions to increase versatility and aerodynamic performance. The Tiger II also retained the same armament, but featured new avionics, such as GPS, inertial navigation systems, electronic countermeasures, and TAC-N, or Tactical Air Navigation. It was also equipped with an AN-APQ-159 radar. Production of the F-5 ceased in 1987, with over 2,700 aircraft built and sold worldwide. The Tiger II remained in service in the United States until 1990. Today, more than 20 other countries still operate the F-5 Tiger II, which has prompted Northrop to focus on a comprehensive system support plan that guarantees active F-5s will continue serving for years to come. Thank you for watching my video. We hope you enjoyed learning about the F-5 Tiger. To keep up with our latest aviation stories, make sure to subscribe to Dark Skies and explore our other fascinating videos on our Dark Documentaries channels. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and stay tuned for more exciting content.